you know what? Actually, you know what? This is a good idea. Let's react to one of Alay's videos. That sounds like a really good idea. Uh, let's take a look at what Alay's videos are. That sounds like a really good idea in honor of Alay absolutely blowing the hell out of Anna Kasparian. Uh, let's take a look. This is called Why Are Innocent People Rotting in Jail? All right, let's do it. My so lovely, lovely imps, I have recently, uh, as a result of a drama that I recently covered, been tuned into um, uh, Alurinati, Alurinati's content. Alurinati uh, uh, is, is, is a influencer who is pretty well known on other, uh, on other platforms than YouTube, but is relatively new to YouTube. And I wanted to check out her stuff. Uh, I recently became aware of her because uh, she completely and utterly humiliated the Young Turks in the arena of ideas um, after they basically uh, uh, went after her for no real reason uh, in this whole saga of Anna Kasparian freaking out and contradicting herself. And Olay, of course, not only came with the receipts to prove that Anna Kasparian was completely and utterly full of shit, but also uh, just made a really, really good argument that uh, disproved most of the things that both Cenk and Anna Kasparian were saying. And I want to check out one of her videos. So without any further ado, uh, let us check out Olurinati's uh, uh, why are innocent people rotting in jail? Um... Oh, Y'all mean to tell me that it doesn't strike you as strange that in New York City, a city with almost 10 million people, 42% of whom identify as white people, 92% of the people incarcerated at Rikers are black or brown? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. New York State was not the first state to pass bail reform, but in many ways, when New York State- Oh yeah, people in chat saying that Rikers Island is uh, is horrible. Yeah, Rikers Island is a nightmare. And the fact that it exists in the middle uh, of uh, the largest city in America is uh, frankly demented. Uh, Rikers Island is a jail island in, uh, in New York uh, City. And uh, it also had one of the highest rates of death of uh, of inmates during COVID. Uh, they had so many people who were awaiting trial. Keep in mind, people who were being held while awaiting trial were dropping dead in Rikers Island. It is a demented and nightmare place that is a disgrace, a stain on our entire nation and all of the people in it. It's not, yes, everyone is pointing out it's not supposed to be a long-term facility. It's a, it's a, it's a jail. People are locked there while they are awaiting trial and they die there because the living conditions, the, uh, uh are so bad because the guards are so notoriously corrupt and violent, uh, that it has one of the highest death rates in America. It is deranged. It is a crime against humanity and it is, again, a stain on our nation. Let's continue. They passed landmark bail reform in January 2020. That was the beginning of what became a nationwide war on bail reform. Today, I want to walk you through that history, the most recent attacks by Governor Kathy Hochul, and why and how this impacts the Rikers crisis. But first, let's talk about what New York State is and isn't in terms of bail reform and crime. New York City cannot decide whether or not it wants to masquerade as a progressive utopia or Gotham City, neither of which is true. Despite what they'll have you believe, that New York City is this lawless, crime-ridden city because it's run by feel-good Democrats who won't be tough on crime, reality is that if you want to make an example out of a city that doesn't invest in policing and mass incarceration, baby, do not look at New York City. Not only is New York City far safer than any Republican rural area per capita, and the majority of all arrests in New York City, as well as nationwide, are for misdemeanors, traffic offenses, and nonviolent crime, but 86% of all felony charges in New York City are ultimately dismissed. But not only that, there are 36,000 NYPD officers, and they are given almost 11 
billion dollars each year. For contacts, that's more money than the Ukrainian government gave to the Ukrainian army at the start of their war. And Jesus. on top of that, almost $11 billion in funding. We've actually talked about NYPD's uh, deranged funding. Um, it was a long time ago uh, that I last talked about this topic, but I covered it on my channel uh, talking about um, how much money the NYPD spends on, uh, uh, on settling lawsuits. Uh, let me see if I can let me see if I can get the numbers real quick. Oh yeah. Uh okay, so as of February 3rd of 2020 uh, of 2023, that's this year. Uh uh sorry, uh, in from just the year of 2022, they paid out 121 million dollars just in settlements of lawsuits against the police station. $121 million in the year of 2022 just in settling out of lawsuits, okay? Just so you guys understand, that's how much money the NYPD has that they shell out cash to settle out of their lawsuits. And if you think about that for a second, that should tell you just how many goddamn uh, misconduct lawsuits, just how many corruption lawsuits, just how many mistreatment lawsuits the NYPD is feeling every year if they have to shell out $121 million a year on that shit. Deranged. ...that NYPD gets, they're on track to spend almost an additional billion dollars in overtime. And Rikers gets 800 plus million dollars yearly too. And I don't know, maybe you forgot about a little thing like our mayor is also NYPD. But there is a war on bail reform in New York City because all those feel good Democrats they think are in charge don't seem to think there's a correlation between this being one of the most expensive cities on the fucking planet and crime and homelessness. We've taken on de Blasio. We've taken on former disgraced Governor Cuomo. Shame. Shame, shame. Who snuck in the first set of rollbacks into an emergency COVID relief package at the start of the pandemic and lockdown. Then resident op Eric Adams, when he came through like the Dolores Umbridge ass nigga he is. And now most recently, Governor Kathy Hochul. Hocho wants to remove the least restrictive mean standard that judges use when making decisions in bail eligible cases. Bail eligible means cases where they're allowed to set bail. This is the only standard that exists. God, Kathy Hochul is such a fail. Kathy Hochul is, uh, hold on. Let me just make sure I got my facts right. Uh, Kathy Hochul is a democratic governor who literally like 90% of the time acts exactly like a Republican. She bungled uh, the midterms in her state because her uh, her goal was to basically suppress uh, uh, further left candidates than neoliberals. And it led to her just bombing the entire state of New York's. Uh, uh, uh. So while, while Democrats were having wins all over the country in the midterms, she bungled the elections in New York. It's fucking pathetic. It requires that judges impose the least restrictive means possible when setting bail conditions to assure a person returns to court. The translation is, you cannot do the most, okay? You can do just enough based on what you know about this person or their record or evidence that they have not returned to court at some other time to make sure that they get back. You can't just look at people and decide based on how you feel and what you think of them and your perceptions. You could decide, oh, they're dangerous or I wanna set higher bail. If Hojo gets her way, judges will have no legal standard to base their bail decisions on. Meaning- By the way, that type of law, a law that gives judges uh, the ability to just, without any standards, it literally just means racism. That is a racism bill. It's saying, oh yeah, judges, go ahead. Judges who are predominantly white, just go ahead and use vibes for how you decide who gets to, uh, who has to pay more for bail, who doesn't, get, who doesn't get to pay bail. It is, it is just a race, that is just a ticket to free racism. It's terrible, nightmarish, extremely fucking racist. The result will be complete arbitrariness. And judges can do whatever they want based on how they feel, which means more black and brown New Yorkers in jail. Governor Hochul Thank is you. fighting yeah, for these goes. bail reform rollbacks despite the fact go. that she knows that bail reform is not linked to a rise in crime. Now, what do I mean by she knows? I mean she wrote an op-ed in the New York Daily News saying so. 
and I quote, blaming bail reform for the increase in violence that cities across America are facing isn't fair and isn't supported by the data. Doing so risks distracting us from what are likely far more significant factors. Upheaval from the pandemic, the availability of illegal guns, increased gang activity, lower arrest rates, and a backed up court system, to name a few. So why is Kathy Hochul deciding to join Eric Adams in what she knows is a factually untrue crusade to one, manufacture a crime wave that the New York Times was careful to wait until after the midterms to finally acknowledge was manufactured, and two, to pin said manufactured crime wave on bail reform. I guess for the same reason that despite being a new governor who was barely elected by the skin of her teeth because of what many believe, and I do share these beliefs, was because she failed to fight the propaganda that was being perpetuated by Top Cop Adams and parroted back by her nut-ass right-wing opponent Lee Zeldin, the first thing she decided to do once elected was alienate her whole damn party by digging her heels into nominating LaSalle, an anti-union, anti-choice judge to the highest court which failed by the way. And that reason is? Let's find out. I don't know, they must have something on shorty. Where's my money, man? But what I do know are the facts about bail reform and why these baseless attacks do nothing but exacerbate the ongoing human rights crisis at Rikers. Yep, I think I think calling it a human rights crisis uh, is a totally valid uh, uh, valid statement. I, I'm, I'm guessing that we're gonna, yeah, good. Okay, we're gonna talk about Rikers Island, I hope. Uh, again, I, I should let the video go. <laughs> it, it is it is a human right human rights crisis. Yep. Everyone's heard about Rikers, yet very few people seem to be aware of the fact that it's a pre-trial detention center, which I do believe is something in and of itself worth noting. Think about that. Rikers has been open since 1932. It's almost a century of torturing black and brown New Yorkers on a daily basis in a city that at any given time has millions and millions of people. Yet, it was viral news when I, but one gal, told people that it was a pretrial detention center. Which really speaks to one central truth. The devil works hard, but propaganda works so much harder. Because normally, awareness of an issue is a good thing but they've turned Rikers infamy against it. So people believe it's infamous because it's this super terrible place for super terrible people and not a pretrial detention center that looms as a threat over the heads of any poor New Yorker who could be accused of something as simple as stealing a bear or stealing a backpack. Over 85% of the people incarcerated at Rikers have not been convicted of a crime. They're being held there because they don't have the money to purchase their freedom. And because people can't purchase their freedom and fight their cases from the outside, they're often forced to take pleas and criminal convictions that they otherwise wouldn't have so that they can get out of the hellscape that is Rikers. And I want you to think about that. When the next time you see an article where they're sensationalizing, oh, this person has 64 criminal convictions, think about it, it happens. That is usually a sign of somebody was homeless or mentally ill and they're being arrested for petty trivial things and the court is saying to them, you can plea to the charge now to the charge at arraignment or we can set bail on you and you'll go to Rikers and that happens enough time and you end up with this long long rap sheet that will be weaponized against you at a later date. Yep. But one of the more well-known tragedies at Rikers that in many ways launched a campaign to close it was what happened to Khalif Browder. Court records show Khalif had attempted suicide at least six times, spent 1110 days behind bars, more than 800 of those in solitary confinement. Holy His court shit. date postponed more than Holy 30 times. He and Holy shit. Can we just listen to that again? Spent 1110 days behind bars, more than 800 of those in solitary confinement. Okay. I want, just for a second, I want to just do a thought experiment for everybody in class. In, in, in I almost said class. Oh, no. Uh, everybody in chat. Everybody in chat. I just want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine spending approximately three years in complete and utter isolation in a cell that is smaller than the studio in which I am sitting right now, a tiny, tiny room where uh, uh, light and sound are used against you. And I want you to imagine spending three years in that place not being able to talk to anybody, not being able to have basic social interactions, not being able to have any privacy. And I want you to imagine doing that 
when you haven't even been convicted of a crime. Can you even imagine that? I can't. I can't imagine trying to bear that. That sounds uh, like one of the most torturous things I can possibly imagine. Remember how I said at the beginning of this segment that Rikers Island is a stain on humanity and a stain on our country? His court date postponed more than 30 times. He endured all this having never been given a trial, never convicted of a crime. Finally, in June of 2013, all charges against Khalif were dismissed. But his experience exposed a troubled criminal justice system and the brutality of life behind bars. It's important to remember that what happened to Khalif Browder was not an anomaly. I think about Leilene Polanco, 27-year-old trans woman who died in Rikers on $500 bail. I think about 24-year-old autistic Izzy Johnson who died in Rikers on a dollar hold. I think about 25-year-old Brandon Rodriguez who died at Rikers after he was left in a crowded intake pen for days where he was beaten and then left in a locked shower stall where he eventually hung himself in that shower stall. And they didn't even tell his mother. They had to find out in a Facebook post. I think about Stefan Kadu, whose mother spoke at a Rikers rally we held last year where she said this. My name is Lassandra Kadu. Stefan Kadu, who lost his life on the boat, AKA the barge, was my son. The boat is an extension of Rikers Island. No mother should go through what I've gone through and still going through. I got a call on September 22nd, around 10 o'clock, another inmate called my daughter, screaming that my son was dead. That's how I found out my child was dead. I haven't seen my son in two years because of the pandemic. I seen Zoom visits. Last time I seen my son was September 28th. My son turned 24 on September 11th. My son died September 22nd, awaiting trial. Everyone there is awaiting trial. They're like she said, they're not convicted of a crime. They're just waiting and they should have to die. We need to decarcerate now before someone else's, before someone else loses their lives. Another mother goes through what I'm going through every day. It's five months that I'm waking up without my son. And it's the most hurtful thing that I have to go through. To find out that there was a 16 person yesterday when I thought that I keep going and my son would be the last 12, which it doesn't make sense because there's 16 more. Four more, I mean, in May 16. I'm going through this. I'm going through this. Every mother who has a son, again, every mother, every mother, every mother who has a son, who has a son in jail, in a jail system, should be outraged. Any human being should be outraged, let alone a mother that's not getting up and speaking. I'm speaking for every person in that building. Every mother, again, should be outraged on the system on how they treating people. Take action. Do something. Say something. Speak up. Do something. So in 2019, the campaign to close Rikers emerged, and advocates introduced a plan to shut it down by first reducing the jail's population to 3,300. Because as it stands- By right the way, just as a note, this is what people are talking about when they talk about prison abolition. This is the struggle that people are talking about and why people believe so strongly in abolition. Because facilities like this exist all over the country. Rikers is the most infamous, but it's not the only one. The incarcerate, the, 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 prison system in the United States is disgustingly out of control. It is disgustingly corrupt. It is operated in part by for-profit prisons that make money off of torturing people. Uh, solitary confinement is used broadly across the United States. This exists all around you. Some of you in my chat may have had to experience this system already. Some of you uh, I know some of you in my audience have been to prison and been to jail and have experienced the brutality of this system, but many of you have not. It exists all around you. Its machine, its machine is, is clanking forward 
uh, every second of every day right around the corner from you. Um, and people are arrested for all kinds of reasons. People are falsely arrested and they suffer and are tortured. People uh, who have done uh, crimes that are absolutely not deserving of torture are tortured nonetheless. It is a sick system. And this is why there are so many people who fight for prison abolition. Uh, because um, the amount of innocence tortured the amount of people who are tortured for financial crimes for petty theft uh is uh is uh, uh is is beyond is, is unconscious conscionable it's beyond belief uh and while people say oh well what about the murderers what about the really dangerous people well the simple truth is that the prison population isn't made up with murderers. The prison population isn't made up even with rapists. The prison population is made up with thieves in some cases, uh, uh, some of whom have not even actually committed a crime worthy of being locked up to that degree. The, the uh, prison system is full up of people who committed uh, small crimes like vagrancy, people who committed trespassing crimes, trying to find a place to stay safe for the night. It is, it is full up on people on minor drug charges. That is the people that the prison system largely abuses. It doesn't save you from anyone. It's not keeping you safe from the murderer. Uh, uh, any more uh, than anything else does. They are a minority of criminals and they are a minority of the population in prisons. Instead, we have a system of terror that tries to, uh, 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 that, that perpetually instills uh, a, a type of punishment to try and keep everybody in line, to keep people pushing, to keep people in their jobs. Um, and if you don't believe me, just... Take a minute and think about how scared you are of not having a home. How scared you are of not being able to make the bills, of being evicted. Why is that so terrifying? It's not just because it's scary to not have a home. It's because not only will you not have a home, but it's only a matter of time before you get scraped into a torture den like one of these. was built to hold a maximum of 3,000 people, yet there are over 5,000 people being incarcerated at Rikers right now, which is why people are being piled on top of one another, why people are being held and locked in shower stalls, why the inside of Rikers looks like this. Instead, what former Mayor de Blasio agreed to was closing Rikers in exchange for four more jails in its place. Is it crack? Is that what you smoke? Do you smoke crack? Nonetheless, that's why bail reform was and is essential to decarcerating Rikers so it can eventually be closed. And it's been successful. Nearly 200,000 people who would have otherwise been unable to purchase their freedom have been able to fight their cases from the outside. And a higher percentage of people showed up to their court dates after bail reform was enacted. The failure to pay rate in New York City fell from 15% in 2019 to 9% in 2021 after the enactment of bail reform. Yet, imagine 15% imagine no-show rate in court. Only 15% at the worst in New York City no-showed for their court dates and had to be arraigned in order to show up in court. 15% is that number, that small percentage, is used to justify nightmare hells like Rikers Island. All over America, 15%. And that's, you would think, if you believe the messaging that's put out by right-wingers, if you believe the messaging that's even put out by liberals, by, by cops all over the place, you would think that every single criminal who's arrested on anything just never shows up for court and immediately flees. But the truth is, only 15% of people don't even show up for court. In fact, even people who've been arrested, even people who are on trial for crimes, as it turns out, they fucking show up. Isn't that fucking insane? Bail reform has been under constant attack. 
There is a misconception that people have around bail that is perpetuated in the media. And that's that bail has something to do with your safety or that bail is there to circumvent the entire criminal legal process and punish people for things they've been bare bones accused of. It's not. The legal purpose of bail is to ensure a person returns to court. That's it. The idea behind cash bail, which is a nonsensical one, is that a person is more likely to return to court if they paid for their freedom, which in application means nothing Deranged. other than rich people can buy their freedom and poor. Deranged. Poor people cannot, which is precisely why over 80% of people arrested nationwide in America made less than $12,000 annually, and over 400,000 of the almost 2 million people incarcerated in this country are being held pre-trial. America preys on the poor. If you let the New York Post, or sadly, even the New York Times tell it, crime is out of control in New York City because the bail laws, the bail laws, the bail laws, people are committing crime nonstop and getting out of jail and just doing it again and again and again. The lie, there you the go, lies, this bitch, the lie. Tell you. Bruh, first of all, New York City still has a cash bail system. Mind you, you know who doesn't? New Jersey. New Jersey completely abolished their cash bail system in 2014 under Republican Governor Christie. But notice how you didn't hear a peep about that, huh? That's suspicious. And if you're ever released on your own recognizance, one of the conditions of that release is that if you don't get rearrested, because if you do, the judge can set bail on you. So even if you are charged with one of the select offenses that judges are no longer allowed to set bail on in New York City, if they release you and you get rearrested for something else, they can and likely will set bail on you, period. But regardless, 99% of all people, regardless of bail or otherwise pretrial conditions, were not rearrested for any alleged violent felony in New York City since the passing of bail reform, 99%. All New York City bail reform did was make it so that judges could no longer set bail on the first arrest for traffic infractions, violations, most misdemeanors, and non-violent felonies. And on cases where bail could still be set, the prosecutors and the judges have to actually articulate a reason, some kind of proof, reason to believe that that person is not going to return to court without further conditions. And they have to set the least restrictive means to make sure that person returns to court. Meaning, they can't wild out. Guns, violence, murder, any of that other sensationalized shit the New York Post pretends is the majority of crime in New York City, cash bail can and absolutely will be set on you if you do any of that shit. And that's if you're lucky and they don't remand you altogether. So in conclusion, Governor Kathy Hochul is our conch shell of the week, and I suggest she stop around with Eric Adams before she around and don't get reelected. Damn, that was a great video. Did y'all know Langston Hughes had a big ass monkey named Jocko? Yeah, bro. And just walking around Harlem with a big ass monkey named Jocko. Learn something new every day. Damn, that was a great video. Well, that was a fantastic video. Uh, I highly recommend all of my imps, please, uh, if you if you have are not already subscribed, uh, go subscribe to Olurinati. I'm gonna post it in chat. Go, uh, first of all, I'll give you a link to the video so, so you all can go send some love. As you all know, real quick, I want to have my imps. What I want you all to go do, real quick, take that video, click that video right there, okay? And I want you to go put a like on that video and just take two seconds, real quick, Right now, there are 75 comments and 775 likes. I want you to go over there, press like, and then in the comments, send just a very simple one. Love from Demon Mama and the Imps. Something along those lines. Imps represent love from Demon Mama and the Imps. Anything like that. Just go on down to the comments. This is something we do every once in a while when we feature a content creator who's smaller than my channel. Uh, go send some love. You guys all know that we've been recognized for being cool and rating with love on multiple occasions. Other content creators in this space know the imps for how cool we are. When we watch something we like on stream, we go show it some love. So real quick, we build a bridge, you know? So real quick, head over there, leave a, little, a real quick comment, smack a like. We want to give some support. Obviously, uh... We, we covered two things of Alay's today, and this is an absolutely fantastic video.
Can I have a link to the video? Yep, we'll, I'll post the link again real quick so you all can go over there. Then we'll check and see how many of you actually went and did it. We can support other content creators and start building bridges in these space that really matter. Show some love to people who help us uh, learn something. That video was fantastic, super informative, super educational on a really tough subject.